Welcome back to Tipsy Whiskey Shenanigans. I'm Steven, and today, tonight, whenever the heck you're watching this, we are getting into my top six dusty bourbons. And by that, I do not mean dusty bottles like super old bottles. I mean what bottles are collecting some serious freaking dust in my collection. But before we get into that, please do me that favor. Like, comment, and subscribe. That helps us out a ton, and we seriously appreciate the support. But let's get in today's video. And so, like I said, we're talking about dusty bottles, bottles that are collecting dust. So let's get right into it, starting off with one that I might catch some flack for saying just because I know it's a very beloved bottle, but honestly, I haven't really been feeling it for probably a year and a half, so it's been collecting dust for at least that long, if not longer. And that is OGD 114. This bad mamma jamma has been collecting dust for me for a minute now. And again, that has nothing to do with this being a bad bottle per se. I I mean, this is an insane freaking deal. 114 proof points. Like literally it is 1999 in Arizona at our total wines here and it's available super easy to find super cheap Jim Beam which I mean is a nuttier flavor profile but still a really solid flavor profile so why has it been collecting dust I just I don't know I'm not I'm not vibing with the whole younger 114 beam juice not when you know when I'm looking for proof nowadays I think I'm looking for something a little bit more older a little bit more towards that mgp side i don't know maybe it's just a bourbon i've kind of fallen off of but i don't know for me it's been collecting dust and i'm sure it's gonna remain there for at least a while now we will see in the future what happens with it but for right now that's collecting dust for me and after that another one where i really like this flavor profile but for some reason this specific bottle and i do mean specific single barrel pick has been collecting dust and that is this russell's reserve bevmo pick which i mean i'll be honest yeah like there's a thick layer of dust on that this bottle is one of my least favorite russell's reserve single barrels ever i just don't care for it compared to a lot of the other single barrels and i've had plenty russell's reserve single barrels i've gone through probably four or five and several other rare breeds like i like that wild turkey flavor profile but for some reason this bevmo pick has just sat there and collected dust on my shelves for probably over two years now like i've had this for probably two, three years now, and it's literally just been collecting dust. I've gone through several other Russell's picks since then, and this one just, it just collects dust. It's not my favorite. It's not the most complex. It's very eh compared to the other picks I've had. So I tend to go through those a lot quicker than I do that. Honestly, I like my rare breeds better than I do that specific pick. So it's been collecting dust. We'll see if it stays that way because it's still, it's, it's wild turkey. So it's still a decent wild turkey bottle it's just not as good as some of the other stuff that's extremely available like i said rare breed for example another one i'm likely gonna catch a little flack on as well weller 12 super hard to freaking find i sat in line for a hot minute this is one of those bottles where it's like i'm likely never gonna buy it again but it's not because it's bad whiskey. I think this whiskey in here is actually pretty solid. That being said, for the amount of work you have to go through to get a Weller, I just, it's not for me, man. I'm not excited about it. I don't get all giddy about it like I do with other bottles. To me, this is just very overrated. It's still, again, good whiskey. Good whiskey, no doubt about that. No one here is calling this bad whiskey but it's collecting dust on my shelf because it's just not my go-to flavor profile. I don't mind the Wellers. I'm not usually a huge weeded fan, but Weller does weeded stuff really well. But for me, this Weller 12, is just very underwhelming. Nothing wrong with the bottle itself. It's just, this isn't my go-to 
bottle and that's why it's been collecting dust and not to mention that it is ridiculously hard to find one of those bottles and when you do you have to go out of your way for one reason or another and up next probably one of the oldest bottles i still have in my collection that i bought probably about three and a half four years ago that i haven't gone through yet and has just been sitting here pretty much collecting dust the whole time because i've only really ever had like five or six drinks out of that and that is old forster 1870 and i'm a huge old forster fanboy so you might be confused like hey steven why have you only had a few rips from this bad boy this sits in a weird place for me this bottle is overpriced for one and on top of that you can also get the bottled in bond for the same exact price and the bottled in bond the green label version of it is basically the same stuff just cranked up to 100 proof so it carries a lot more weight like it's more flavorful a little bit more intensified it just has so much more going on in it than this 90 proof version of that does so that's why i think this kind of sits in this weird awkward phase because why would i drink this when i could just drink the 100 proof or even the 100 proof screw top like honestly i will take that over this so that's why this one's been perpetually sitting on my collection collecting dust because it is also part of the whiskey row series so i do like having that side of oh i have the whole collection but like if there was any bottle in the whiskey row series where it's like why do you exist that bottle is it going into a bottle that is actually super freaking exciting but i haven't had it literally probably since the week i bought it which for me is kind of strange because usually i go back to things every couple months Barrel Vantage. This bottle is the newest bottle on this list, but I got a sample of this, a media sample from Barrel. I tried it. I really freaking enjoyed it. Killed the sample, went out, bought the bottle, and whenever that came out, I think it was sometime uh, mid to late last year, I really enjoyed this bottle. There's been about two, three drinks that have came out of this bottle, and it's done nothing but sit there and collect dust since then. Why is that the case? I don't know. I haven't, I just really haven't gotten into it. Like there's nothing about it that screamed, oh, hey, you want to try this bottle again. Why that's the case? I don't know. This, this video actually makes me want to try that bottle out again. Maybe that week was just a phase and it's a crappy bottle. Who knows? Stay tuned. I guess I'll have to get into it after this video now, but Again, haven't really touched that bottle. And last but not least, probably my favorite one on this list, Four Roses Small Batch Select. I think this is a wonderful bottle. This is a bottle that blends bourbon and rye together. This is kind of like a burr rye. It's a very minty bourbon, if you will. I've been collecting dust like nonstop. Like this is insane. An insane amount of dust on this bottle. And I think that's just because, again, it's kind of this in-between of a whiskey. So even though it is a bourbon, to me, this drinks like it doesn't fit in any specific category. And recently, I haven't really been gravitating towards that because I've been either looking for something that's super herbal and minty or something that's like bourbon-y. Bourbon, bourbon, bourbon. And this one's just been kind of left down under on the bottom of my shelf for about two years collecting dust because... I haven't really gotten into it due to the fact that it's just in this weird kind of purgatory type flavor profile. But again, that is a wrap for today's video. This has been the top six dusty bourbons or the bourbons in my collection collecting dust. But I'll be honest, none of these are collecting dust because they're bad bourbons. These are all really solid, decent bourbons. And after this video, I'm gonna have to crack into quite a few of these because it's been too freaking long. So I guess you could say this has just been a public service announcement of don't let those older bourbons fall out of love with you and keep drinking them and don't let them sit there and collect dust like I have been doing. Please do me a favor, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know down below what are some bottles that have been sitting in the back of your collection collecting dust recently. Also, check out the Facebook, Instagram, and the Patreon. Links for all that stuff are down there below. That is a wrap for today's video. Cheers, y'all. We'll see you later.